Florida's manufactured home resort communities offer great opportunities to fulfill your retirement or second home dreams. In this video, I will give you an introduction to the communities and some basic choices that you will need to consider. Hello, I'm Russ Watson. I created Florida Manufactured Home Living to educate those interested in manufactured housing and our communities. This is the first in a series covering the resort parks. There are hundreds of such communities across Florida. I present the characteristics that separate one from another. This will help you narrow down what fits your needs. As a bonus, I'll add a tip from my book at the end of the video that will enable you to look at any park from the comfort of your own home. If this topic interests you, please click the subscribe button and I will notify you when I post new videos in this series. You will find additional resources on our websites and Facebook page. I posted the links to these below. Please leave any comments you may have. I welcome your feedback. I break the resort parks into three sizes. The largest parks are those of 500 lots or more. These will have multiple clubhouses, elaborate landscaping, large staffs, and may include golf courses, marinas, restaurants, and other facilities. The most famous community of this type, the Villages, started out as a manufactured home park. The attraction here is the availability of amenities at the reduced costs that come with manufactured housing. Large parks range from 200 to 500 lots. They will have one or more clubhouses, perhaps multiple pools, and many amenities. Community life can be close-knit or similar to the mega parks, more like a small city. The amenities usually include an elaborate clubhouse, kitchen, pool, pool deck, tennis court, shuffleboard, bocce, and much more. These are the communities most think about when they're talking of manufactured home resorts. They're not all alike. In fact, the disparity between offerings and costs between parks can be quite dramatic. Small resorts in the 100 to 200 lot range appeal to those looking for more of a village environment. Amenities may not be as elaborate as the larger parks, but a nice clubhouse and a pool are still the norm. Social activities may feel uh, more like ham and bean supper than elaborate dress up affairs, uh, but they're comfortable. A particular activity such as a nearby beach or uh, fishing might be the chief attraction. We've seen how parks vary in size. Let's take a look at some of the homes found in these communities. We'll go for a ride through a few parks. Today's manufactured houses look much like their site-built or modular cousins. They are absolutely beautiful. There are floor plans and sizes to meet all needs. The packages usually include carports and screened-in or year-round porches. Most of our resort communities are a mix of older and newer houses. You can see the pride homeowners take in the landscaping and presentation of each home. Some of these date back into the 80s or earlier. Older homes present an opportunity for a seasonal or a retirement home at a small percentage of the price of a new model. Smaller homes often appeal to snowbirds, providing a winter retreat to a Florida resort at costs far below other venues. It is common for snowbirds to enjoy this community living so much that they upgrade to larger homes in the same park and move in full time. The bigger homes with three and sometimes four or more bedrooms offer space for visiting family and friends. 
Some owners use the spare bedrooms for offices or craft rooms. Folks often sell older homes fully furnished, and while a few things may be a bit outdated, it gives one a great place to start at very little startup cost. Just pick up the keys, stock the fridge, and head to the pool. Life in these communities can be a whirlwind of activities, and that's an attraction for most folks. Let's look at Sue and Bob's schedule for the week for an idea of how it could be. Monday, Bob has tennis, Sue has pool aerobics. Sue has a ladies' luncheon at 11.15, so Bob's on his own. That's okay, because Bob's going fishing for the afternoon, while Sue's going to go play bingo. They meet for dinner, and then it's back to the clubhouse for jokers and pegs with a group of friends. Tuesday, Bob has golf league. Sue's off to the craft club. They meet for lunch, and then go play pickleball. That evening, there's a cocktail party at the Smith's. Wednesday morning, Bob has pool aerobics. Sue has book club. Bob plays horseshoes after being in the pool. They meet for lunch and then play cribbage that afternoon. That evening, there's a potluck dinner in the clubhouse. Thursday morning, Sue's back at pool aerobics while Bob's playing bocce. They meet for lunch, then they go to bridge club. They meet for dinner, and then they go to travel club to plan their next big vacation with a crowd from the park. Friday morning is pickleball. Meet for lunch. Sue goes shopping with a shop hop club. Bob plays darts in Friday afternoons. Then it's out for Friday night dinner club with a crowd at an Irish place. Saturday's the HOA breakfast. Then the shuffleboard league. Meet for lunch. Then there's a pool party Saturday afternoon and evening. That covers dinner. Sunday morning, it's off to church. Back for lunch. Bob plays poker in the afternoon. Sue's got bingo. There's a pizza party in the clubhouse. And then Pinochle follows that with another crowd. Then they rest up for another week. Rarely is boredom the problem you face. Far more likely are there so many choices that you have to choose between things. At every activity, you'll meet more new people and get together with old friends. The clubhouse, pool, and associated amenities are the social center of the community. No two parks are exactly alike. The main hall is used for community meetings, group activities, and social gatherings. Smaller clubhouses often have warming kitchens comprising a refrigerator, microwave, and serving equipment. The larger clubhouses may contain full-blown commercial kitchens, enabling resident groups to offer meals cooked in the clubhouse to the community. Specialty areas for card playing, billiards, ping pong, and other games are also common. In recent years, fitness centers have grown quite popular. They may be as simple as a workout area or rival a professional gym. Pool activities can include lap swimming, aerobics, pool volleyball, etc. Anytime the pool is open, it will be a gathering place for residents and their guests. As our couple Sue and Bob showed us, activities at the clubhouse provide hours of fun and a golden opportunity to meet and become friends with your neighbors. Outside activities may include tennis, pickleball, shuffleboard, bocce, and horseshoes. There may be additional outside facilities such as picnic areas, tiki bars, hot tubs, or barbecue grills. Each park has its own unique combination and may contain additional facilities. Can't you just picture yourself sitting by the pool or trying to best your friends at one of the many games available? 
The social life of the clubhouse is the big attraction in manufactured home resort parks. Buying a house in a manufactured home community is a major financial decision. Before you sign on the dotted line, you gotta know the deal. I'll be covering this in detail in a future video. Please hit subscribe below if you'd like to be notified when it's posted. I promised you a tip from my book and here it is. The first view you should have of any community that interests you is from Google Earth. Google Earth may be accessed from any browser. We will use Spanish Lakes Fairways as an example. Start by placing the community name or address in the search bar. Spanish Lakes Fairways is a large park near Fort Pierce, Florida. You can zoom out or zoom in and scroll around to see the park features. This park has a large clubhouse, two swimming pools, shuffleboard, bocce, tennis, pickleball, and a second clubhouse by the second pool. There's plenty of parking and a cart pathway out to the community golf course. Homes in this park are manufactured homes or concrete block construction. You can tell the difference by the roof line. This being a CBC home, this being a manufactured home. Most homes are large, but there is an area up in the middle of the community of smaller homes. Zooming further out, we can look at the surrounding property. To the east and the north are agricultural lands, to the west I-95. A real close look and we can see the sound barrier wall that exists on the side of I-95 for the length of the community. To exit the park, we come down here out to Indrio Road and we see that we have easy access to I-95 north and south. This would be handy if you travel a lot. Let's turn on all the layers so we can see other features. We go east on Indrio Road and not too far away is the nearest grocery store and shopping center. Winn-Dixie, China Garden, CVC Pharmacy, there's a liquor store, a gym. This is uh, most everything that you have a real immediate need for. And for those who are real aficionados, a Dunkin' Donuts just to the north. Let's see how far away that is from the park. We zoom out a bit and access the measuring tool. Change it over to miles. And we can come from our shopping center over to the access road, up to the park, roughly five and a half miles to the nearest shopping center for necessities. How about to the beach? Down here to Indrio, across. Down to the bridge. and out to the beach, about 15 miles. How about nearby cities? Well, if we go to the north, we see Vero Beach, Sebastian, and Melbourne. To our south, Fort Pierce, Port St. Lucie, and West Palm Beach. I hope you've enjoyed this introduction to Manufactured Home Resort Parks. I will follow this up with more detailed information in future videos. 
please hit the subscribe button to be notified when I upload them to the channel. Enter questions or suggestions in the comments. Many more resources are available on my websites and Facebook page. The links are below. Since retiring in 2011, I've lived in two manufactured home resort parks, owning three homes. I've served as an HOA president and on the boards of state and national manufactured housing organizations. Community living provides my wife and I with the retirement lifestyle we always dreamed of. Manufactured housing resorts are a great place to live with a lifestyle that offers new friends, many activities, and amenities rivaling the fanciest of country clubs. The key to happiness is finding a community that meets your needs.